Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to talk about spiritual replacement therapy. Yes, what could that be? Guys, if you've been following this channel, around about two years ago, I was still a vegan. I was following a plant-based diet. I was somewhat of a new ager. I was meditating, doing cold showers, breathing techniques, contemplating on Vipassana meditation, Zen Buddhism, Taoism, Jainism, non-duality, unity consciousness, and much, much more. So if this doesn't ring a bell, if this is nothing that you ever heard about, it is essentially a mishmash of different spiritual philosophies all bunched together and we call it the new age. Many new agers will tell you, yes, 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 there is a truth to Christianity, but it is not all true. There are certain glimpses and you can find those glimpses, those little truths in all religions. Islam has it, Buddhism has it, Hinduism has it. They're all pointing to the exact same thing. But do they? That is the question. Spiritual replacement therapy. What do I mean by that? Back in the day, even as a new ager, even though I never identified myself as a new ager, I came to the conclusion that there is huge spiritual deception within that so-called spiritual community. I realized that most of those people dwell in a very premature state, in a lovey-dovey state, in a we're gonna hold hands and sing kumbaya my lord around the fireplace state if you will. It was very juvenile and it was very very deceptive. I realized that those people were misled by their egos. To put it very very simple, they swapped one emotion for the other. They were very afraid, very weak people, people that had some sort of trauma. And this is what led them to new age, to psychedelics, plant medicines, etc, etc, etc. Some of those people came from a lot of anger, violence, and they simply swift swapped. They replaced hate and anger with love. But did they really? Observing those people, studying them, learning from them, I saw that it was fake. That those people still had a lot of anger in their hearts, but on a superficial level now talked about love, how everything is connected. You saw that in the vegan community as well. Compassion, we are all one, we are all animals. But in reality, they hate their fellow men. So it is a fake state of love. It is not real, it is not true. And it's very, very transparent once God gives you eyes to see. So I realized that those people swapped the hate for the love on a superficial level. Why? Because it was occupying their ego. Very, very simple. And in the end, it is all an ego game. And this is what I observe within the Christian community as well. Guys, coming from the Balkan, I've encountered many, many so-called Christian Orthodox people. And I can tell you that a majority of those people are not real Christians. I know we have a renaissance nowadays on the internet and many Americans, many Westerners find to true, authentic Christian Orthodoxy. And that is amazing. However, most people that have been baptized by default, if you will, are not true Christians. We see that not only in orthodoxy, but in Christianity in general. We have so many different churches since the schism, so many different branches, alleged branches, so many different so-called Christian philosophies that are all of course pointed out as heresy by the Christian Orthodox Church. But I'm always interested in the results in specific people. And I had to see that most Christians are absolutely fake. And why? Because they're motivated by their ego. They're not letting go. 
as long as you dwell in the ego, it is impossible for you to truly be in communion with God. It is really that simple. It does not matter if you are a new ager or if you are now a Christian. If you are not still and know God, you are still identifying with something. And I know the author bros will scream heresy. Check it out. It is written in the Bible. You should be still and know. We talked about this in previous streams. Be still and know, so you will know that I am God. It states it in the Bible. We should go into the prayer closet, be still and know God. Why? Because we cannot imagine God or reimagine God or reinvent God. We cannot judge God. And this is truly what we do. Every time we try to make a depiction, we are creating an idol. We are judging how God is supposed to be. Every time we are praying for something, we are judging how God should be. I want this beautiful car. I want this beautiful woman. I want to be happy. I want to be rich. It is not up to you, but to God. His will should be fulfilled and not yours. And in reality, yet again, it is not even your will. It is the ego's will, always. It does not matter what you think you are, you're simply thinking you are. So as long as you are thinking, you're trapped in the ego. Very, very simple. You might think that you're a Buddhist, you might think that you're a Hindu, you might think that you're Muslim, or you might think that you are a Christian. You're simply thinking and you're not knowing. As long as you are thinking, you're trapped in your intellect, you are just obsessing about how God should, could, would be and what should, could happen in the future or what should have happened in the past. You are not in the now. You are not with God. God is present. God is always present. God is infinite and God is in the now. And I understand, yet again, this sounds new agey, but those things are true. You can experience them for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. I recommend the silent prayer. Sit down, you can start with the Jesus prayer and then get back into silence, where you're not judging, but you're simply observing. You're observing your thoughts. You get to know thyself, know thyself, and then you get to know God. Now, I went on a rant here. Back in my new agey days, I saw this replacement. This replacement of hate with love. Both fake, both just emotions, both deceptions. But now I see it with the Christians as well. They are Christians now, so they have to follow the Ten Commandments, right? They have to go to church, they have to do their prayer, or the Muslims, they have to do the prayer five times per day. They have to do this, they have to do that, and then they are a good Christian, then they are a good Muslim. But wait a second, what if they fail? Then they obsess about it, then they start judging themselves, then they get angry at themselves for not being a true Christian, etc, etc, etc. In the end, you're replacing. What do I mean by that? The ego is seen by normies as something evil, something bad, right? Oh, this person is very egocentrical. But they don't understand that everything is the ego, no matter if it is perceived as positive or negative. The ego is the voice in your head that keeps you occupied. That's pretty much it. It just keeps you occupied and it doesn't care. As long as you give it a replacement, it will be happy. So, if you started out as being a violent thug and then you became a new ager and then you became a Christian, the ego is still happy because it can grasp something. It can hold on to something. It can identify as something. And every time it does, it keeps you busy. It keeps you occupied. It gives you a worth of self-sense. It gives you an understanding, a false understanding of yourself, but it doesn't allow you to truly be with God. In orthodoxy, we call it the wordless voice of God. God is not a voice, is not a chatter. God is still. God doesn't talk to you. 
if you hear voices in your head, you're either schizophrenic or you're just a normie. We all have voices in our head, our own box that's always chatting with us, telling us things, building us up, breaking us down, telling us good things, just to tell us bad things the next day, right? You come home from work, you sit down on your couch, what's next? One voice tells you, go to the gym, you can do it, you're strong, no pain, no gain. The other voice tells you, nah, man, let's take it easy, right? The knees hurt, the elbows hurt, let's just relax, let's watch some Netflix, eat ice cream. Both are wrong. Both are just voices. One builds you up, the other one breaks you down. In the end, you will have to follow God. But God is not positive or negative. That is the biggest misconception. This is why it's called spiritual replacement therapy. Because people are seeking good vibes. I see it with the Christians just the same way I saw it with the New Agers. There is no difference between you. Oh, we shouldn't be rude as Christians. We should be nice. We should come from love. Yeah, sure. But do you even know love? Do you even know what true love is? I want to know what love is. You don't, right? What you're talking about is spoiling, pampering, being nice to each other. That is fake love and creates all the problems that we have in this day and age. You might think prescribing hormones to a young child so it can choose its gender when it's 18 is coming from love. I know, for most normal people, this is obvious. But believe me when I say that the people that make those decisions, they truly believe that their decision comes from a place of love, that they're doing the right thing. But this is not true love. This is fake. This is emotion and it comes essentially from fear. It is a deception, it is a mistake. But of course, those people cannot see, they are blind. God didn't give them eyes. However, we see the same thing with so-called Christians nowadays. They replace their misery, their agony, their pain with a church. They go to a church, they're singing, they're shouting. Some people, I saw it in Germany, go to so-called techno churches, heel song churches, and what have you. They go in there to celebrate God in their way. Many of them are covered with Christian tattoos, screaming and shouting, raving and ranting, all in the name of Jesus, all for God. It is a deception. This is not where you can find God, but this is where you will find, yet again, another emotion and another attachment. And the ego is just too happy, just too glad to take that role. The ego is an actor. The ego translates into the devil. The devil is the deceiver. The devil, the Satan, is the father of all lies. So essentially, Christianity, the pursuit of true spirituality, should be a pursuit of truth a pursuit of knowing, a pursuit of isness, a pursuit of what is real, a pursuit of what is happening right now, what is. Without interpretation, without fakeness, the exact opposite of lies. If Satan is the father of lies, God is the ultimate truth. The moral framework, the origin of all goodness, love, true love. But as long as you stay occupied, as long as you practice spiritual replacement therapy, you won't be able to experience God. And that is the whole point of this video. No matter if it is the new age, no matter if it is Christianity, 99.99999% of people are still of the devil. I know that Christians don't want to hear that. I'm not from the devil, I'm a Christian now, right? You stated that Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and now you're a newborn Christian. The question is, of course, what has changed since? Before I became Christian Orthodox, I recited it. I said, Jesus Christ 
I might not believe in you just now, but I pray to you and I hereby declare that you are my Lord and Savior. Nothing really changed. <laughs> but this is what people call a newborn Christian. And if you talk to those people and you ask them if they're still angry, if they're still judgmental, they will answer this with yes. And they will tell you that most people do. And that, that is totally normal because we are not God and we are just humans. So therefore, this is just regular behavior, nothing wrong with it. But then I have to say, your whole pursuit has failed. There is no result to it whatsoever. Back in the day, I read a book by Jed McKenna called Spiritual Enlightenment, The Damnedest Thing. And Jed McKenna is somewhat of a spiritual troll, if you will. He talked to Zen Buddhists and to other practitioners that labeled themselves to be something. And he asked them if they are enlightened yet. And he asked if their schools that they are being taught in, if they produce many enlightened people. And if so, how many per year? The Zen Buddhist student had no answer to this. But the question was very simple. If you are in the business of enlightenment, then you should produce enlightened people, right? It should be referenced on your homepage, basically. If I want to become enlightened and I go to a meditation school, to a Buddhist temple, I should be able to ask for their resume. I should be able to find out how many enlightened people they produced. And the same applies for Christianity. If we ask the churches, the sects, how many true Christians they produced, what would be the answer? What would be the answer? It's probably somewhere in the zero percentile, 0, 0.000 something. How many people truly changed? And I'm not talking about, again, changing their ego, replacing something. This is not what we are talking about here. I hope that you can catch a glimpse, can read between the lines, if you will. Because this is something that I cannot teach you, and I'm not here to teach anybody. In the Bible it states as well, let no man teach you. But this is something that you have to learn for yourself, you have to discover for yourself. As long as you try to intellectualize it, you won't be able to figure it out. Because there is nothing to figure out. You cannot figure it out. It is like an ant trying to figure out a human. It's impossible. You cannot figure God out with your intellect. We're just too brain dead for this, to be totally honest. You have many intellectuals, you have many church scholars that are studying this field. Very, very bright and smart people. And it's a joy to listen to them. But essentially, it is just for entertainment purposes. Because it won't bring you closer to God, no matter how smart those people are. Sure, a book can point you towards that direction, but can it truly explain God to you? Impossible. It cannot. God is not definable. Not with our little brains. Not for us humans. Of course not. How could it? So where can we find God? Yet again, only in the stillness. God is not an emotion. Being emotional is very feminine. But nowadays, it is being told to men as well that we should be emotional, that we should embrace our feelings. Boys don't cry? That is so wrong. Boys cry as well. Right? Embrace the full spectrum. Taste the rainbow. Ooh, nice. Essentially, they're bringing you further into deception. Everything that is passion, everything that is emotional, everything that you can experience, no matter if positive or negative, will bring you further away from God, closer to the devil. You have to understand that you can find God only in the stillness, no matter as what you identify. Right now, you might believe that you are a Jew or you might believe that you are a Muslim. 
and that is fine, believe that. In the end, you can do what you want to. It doesn't really matter, it's just a practice. You can sit on your carpet and pray five times per day facing Mecca, or you can face a wall and pray against that wall if you want to. You can go to the church and sing the most beautiful gospel. You can do all kinds of things. You can go to the gym, or lift weights. You can go to jiu-jitsu and roll. You can go into a boxing ring and box. You can go to a club and dance. You can do many, many things. But the question is, do you know God? And again, not here to teach you. It's called Bobby's perspective after all. Give it a shot or not. Have nothing to lose. You can proceed with all kinds of practices and you can add the silent prayer to it to see if there's something in it. Maybe there is. The reality is, of course, that the ego always wants something. So even listening to this video, maybe now you're considering Christian orthodoxy or maybe you're considering the silent prayer. Maybe you're considering to listen to what Bobby has said. Maybe, maybe not. But the reality of things is that the ego is looking for some sort of survival benefit. It is true. Our body always wants to survive. We are survival machines. That is true. Make no mistake about it. No matter if you're a Christian or not, we are survival machines. This is why we enjoy pornography. This is why we enjoy fast food. It is all for survival. Your body doesn't know that you're just looking at porn. Your body thinks it's going to create children. Of course, it's not gone. This is why it is a degenerate practice. However, your ego loves it because it feels like survival. That's what it is. And it's the same with junk food. You have to understand the survival principle doesn't end there. You might think, oh, we love junk food because our body likes to survive. This is why we enjoy calorically rich food. Yes, that is true, but it goes further than that. What if you start starving yourself and you do a bodybuilding preparation? You get shredded. Technically, that goes against our survival, right? No, it is just the same thing. There are two sides to this coin. Now you become more sexually attractive, right? Or you become more socially attractive because in your environment, people admire your muscles. Social survival is just as important as your physical survival. It is one and the same. So your ego is obsessed with survival. It loves it. As long as you keep it in survival, your ego will be happy. It truly does not matter if you feed it positive or negative emotions. I want to make this very, very clear. As I said, you can sing Kumbaya, you can clap your hands, you can dance, you can believe that now everything is nice and fine. It is still the ego. You can only experience God when you're not thinking. You can only experience God when there is no emotion attached to it. God is male. It is level-headed, clear. No deception, no distraction, no emotion. And this is why we have to pray in silence and get to know ourselves so we can know God. Because as long as we stay in our heads, we get to know the devil. As long as we stay out of our heads, we stay in a silent present state, we can know God. We can be one mind with God. Because God is calmness, stillness, silence. There is no emotion to God. But for somebody that talks about silence, I speak an awful lot. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section as well what your thoughts are, your thoughts. Write them down below. Let me know, is this spiritual deception yet again? Is this new agey mambo jumbo? Is this a heresy? Let me know in the comment section and we can have a discussion there. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.